One of the best skills you can learn during your masters for your PhD is to disagree respectfully. Now, before this time, a lot of your interaction with your uh, supervisor and lecturers has been a one-way street. It has been that they are the expert and they are sort of like imparting knowledge into you. And don't get me wrong, for a lot of your masters, this will be how it is. They will have the information, they will give it to you, you will act that on that information, etc. But towards the end of your masters, if you start having having opinions, if you have started, started to have insights into the way you think the research should be going, this is a time to learn to disagree respectfully. You are now entering the academic conversation. An academic conversation is actually quite blunt, is actually sort of uh, much more robust than any other conversations you have. I actually just went on holiday and I spent time with someone with a PhD in ecology and uh, I found found that, uh, you know, he was quite blunt with the way he said stuff. And I immediately, you know, I didn't know he had a PhD at the time, but I was like, oh my God, he's quite blunt or he's quite sort of like forthright. And that's because that's the way scientists and PhDs are trained. And you don't have to sort of like worry about offending people, unless you're obviously incredibly rude, but this academic conversation needs to be robust. It needs to be direct. And this is where you can start sort of flexing and training those academic conversation muscles. So don't worry about offending your supervisor. Don't worry about speaking, you know, to someone who potentially and probably has much more experience than you in a particular field. This is your time to start having those disagreements. Coming to compromises is so very important in science so that you can find a middle ground where you're both happy researching. Having this skill during your master's is not necessary, but if you start to build it in your master's for your PhD, your PhD will be much smoother. You'll start to understand that you you can have these robust conversations without fear of offending anyone, without anyone getting too sort of like annoyed at you. You have to have them because that is the way research is done. A lot of communication, a lot of hardcore kind of disagreements that you can work through. No one's offended at the end of the day. That is the process. So get used to it and build that skill in your masters. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from how to write the perfect abstract, the tools I use, uh, my TEDx talk, the podcast I've been on, and more. It's exclusive content available for free, so go check it out now. Another thing I think you should do in your masters that will make your PhD so much easier is to start a system for organizing and reading literature. Now, in your masters, you won't have so much literature to read. You'll have a very specific area to read on. During your PhD, you'll start to expand and the area that you're reading. And that's when things can get overwhelming. And without a good system that you build in your master's research, it will be much harder for you to kind of keep track of what's going on. Personally, I like to keep things very simple. I have kind of a three structured approach for reading literature. The first uh, sort of approach that I go through and the first system that I go through is just absolutely just finding everything I can Find it, put it in a folder, drop it in, put it into subgraph categories if you must. But essentially, this is just a blast through the literature in the world in different search engines, Google Scholar, um, Scopus, uh, Web of Science, wherever you can get it that's specific for your field, learn how those search engines work and how to use the operators to actually sort of narrow down your search to the things you're actually interested. There are plenty of other tools online as well that I've talked about in my other video, so go check it out here. Um, that includes uh, lit maps, research rabbit, connected papers, all of that is fantastic for helping you just find that stuff. Then after that, the second bucket, the second thing that I do is I start to go through with a critical eye. I'm not planning on reading all of the paper at this point. I read the abstract only and maybe a little bit if I'm interested. But here I go, not interesting, not interesting. Ah, this one's interesting. And I split them off into interesting papers and not interesting papers. And the third thing I do then is I take the interesting papers and I read them, I map them out, I put them in my, um, my uh, research manager, which I use Mendeley, um, and yes, that is my pr approach and I did it in stages. I batched up these terms. I never let them bleed into each other because the moment you start doing search and you go, I need to read the whole paper. You're actually reading the whole paper. The search goes out the window. So search, find a nice big batch, then 
uh, have a look at them critically, and then have a look at the ones you think are actually interesting for your research in more detail. That's an approach I use, but you will develop your own system using your own tools that you prefer, and during a master's, that is so very important. Another really important skill to learn during your master's is to focus on your research and stop comparing yourself to other people. It's such a, a sort of demotivator when all of a sudden you're like, oh, I've only achieved this in mine, all these other people are doing much better things. That is not gonna help you move forward with your research, particularly when you graduate and you decide to do a PhD. Now, understanding that your research kind of uh, journey is your own and you should only be trying to make yourself better based on what you were doing last week, last month. You know, have you improved on the research that you did last week? Are you always taking tiny little steps towards your end goal of getting that sort of like research result or writing that thesis? Are you producing tables and graphs that could go into your thesis or your peer reviewed papers? All of that is actually what you should be focusing on, not what the other person in the lab is doing and how great they are and how much better they're doing. There's always someone better. There's always someone who's doing sort of more awesome things, even outside of your university. If, even if you're the best in your university, there's someone else out there with more papers, more everything. And that really sort of demotivated me during my postdoc as well, because I would just go on Google uh, Scholar and have a look at everyone's citations and be like, oh, I'll never make it, this is pointless. No, focus on your journey and getting into that habit during your masters will help you during your PhD a lot. Learning to write academically is very, very tough. It's not a natural way to communicate for humans. It is dense, it is technical, it is long, it is very large paragraphs of just dense information. And it does take a little bit of time to get used to writing exactly in this way. One thing you can do during your masters is start to ask PhD students in the lab or your supervisor if you can be part of the paper writing process. Can you have a look at drafts? Maybe even if you're only picking up spelling errors at this point, I think any sort of exposure you can get to the process of writing academic papers and um, the, uh, the kind of changes that need to be made to get it past peer review is so very important. Now, I've got my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit that talks you through all of that. Go check it out, I'll put a link here. But essentially, it comes down to exposure to academic writing, learning what the standard of writing is for peer review, learning how rigorous it needs to be, learning that it's not actually easy to read, but it should be dense, full of information, it should be absolutely clear, concise, um, and all of that means that you do have to develop a new style of writing, and exposing yourself as early as possible to that during your master's will definitely help you during your PhD. You'll hit, be able to hit the ground running, Lastly, I would say presentation skills are something that you should be building during your master's that will really help your PhD. Now, I'm not talking about formal presentations necessarily, but presenting to your supervisor, to your group, to your faculty, all of that is so very important. Getting used to standing up in front of people, delivering information, and sort of like silencing that, 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 that voice in your head that's saying, oh, you're not good enough. Oh my God, like uh, they're gonna think you're stupid. What if all this research is actually rubbish? It is your story, your presentation. You lead people through it the way you want. They are sort of like on it, on the journey journey with you through this presentation for the first time. So they're just happy to go along. Once you've done a few presentations, you realize that they're not scary, that uh, everyone's in the same boat. And even the most sort of like uh, prestigious of academics get a little bit scared during big presentations in front of large audiences. So getting over that kind of public speaking hurdle is so important. Start small, start presenting to your supervisor in group meetings, start presenting to your faculty and slowly grow up that confidence so that you know you can present in your PhD with confidence because you've done it all before. I've given countless presentations, seminar, I've talked in front of thousands of people, I've emceed events in front of the public for my sort of like science communication days. All of this getting up in front of people is so very important because it just shows you that it's not scary and each time you do it, even though that nervousness bubbles up, it becomes easier and easier and easier. And the more comfortable you look during your PhD, people interpret that as confidence, as 
uh, that you know what you're doing and that you are right. So the more relaxed you can be during a public speech, the better. Start building that skill during your master's and it will pay dividends during your PhD. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about the skills you need to build during your master's for your PhD. Hit the ground running by learning these skills and practicing these skills during your master's and you'll be well ahead of everyone else who hasn't focused on those skills in particular. Let me know in the comments what you would add and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide and I'll see you in the next video.